So we're back with the next part of our commentary of Star Wars The Last Jedi. We've seen the introduction to Admiral Holdo, we've seen the First Order destroy the base, we've seen Luke decide to teach Rey the reasons why the Jedi must end, and there's been a good amount of bad stuff, but there've also been a few positive moments here and there, and now let's get into Finn meeting Rose. You know, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, was that I find it interesting how Poe actually stitched up his own jacket to give for Finn for when Finn would wake up because if you look at it it has all the stitches on it across the back and everything I still find it astounding that he's woken up so quickly from being knocked out during a lightsaber battle this is a really good yeah. moment kind of making fun of the idea of all these heroes Huh? It's entertaining though. And it's got one of my it's probably one of my favorite moments from this um from this episode itself, from this movie. Well it comes right here. <laughs> because that's what Star Star Wars nerds are like. If yeah. someone from the Star Wars movie says that, we're like, whoa, that's amazing. You know, I wonder if someone was actually doing a mission and she just shocked them straight away before they explained anything, what would have gone on? Because yeah. obviously they, like, you know, something could be going on. He was running away, just like he ran away from the resist, uh, yeah. First Order. No, how does that not come off as selfish? Yeah, no. <laughs> Sounds so selfish. See, a lot of people say that this is the movie that introduced fuel to Star Wars and the fact that it's now a thing. But I know for a fact that I believe that Attack of the Clones was the first mention in the movies of fuel where Anakin's like a fire just above the fuel cells. Yeah. So we know fuel's a thing in Star Wars. It's just never been that big of a deal until I think this movie really made it a big thing. And here's what I'm questioning. Finn, a person who knows so much about the whole tracking thing and everything, he's just a janitor though. Just because he mopped the place doesn't mean he knows anything about it, you know? No, because here's the other question I have. How did they get a schematic of the Star Destroyer, or Snoke's Destroyer at least? That seems like a pretty, pretty big thing to get. But why won't she agree to the plan? Because the spelling of three peers looks so weird. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: why wouldn't Holdo agree to the plan? Because as far as we're aware, it's reckless and it's basing a lot on chance. But what's her if plan? But what's her plan? We don't know what her plan is. Yeah. So as far as we're concerned, what are we comparing her plan to? This plan to no plan, at all. And we get this forced Maz Kanata scene. But then also... What? It, like, how does it follow it? Yeah, how does it... I, there's a question of what's recording her and everything. I get it's Star Wars and we can suspend our belief a little. But when I can see them from behind as well, I'm really questioning what's going on. Yeah. Because this is also a movie which makes fuel very practical. So I'm not going to be really aware of what's going on because... <laughs> this joke as well oh it's so weird and out of place and then you get that look it just seems so weird and out of place she's able to project another image mm -hmm. in the projection itself and from a film perspective itself it would have made more sense for Finn to be the one to suggest Ma Naz because we've seen Finn interact with Maz based in the last movie itself. So I think that would have been a slight better upgrade, as well as the fact that Poe and Finn going on this mission itself would have been much better. You know, at the crack of dawn. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I didn't even mean that on purpose, <laughs> but that happened. I do like this was a really good moment to start off with. Uh, the first time I saw it, and it still is a pretty good moment. And it's good how Kylo Ren's the first one to notice it because he's more b trained than Rey. Yeah. And the use of silence, oh, so good. I like her, her, how her first reaction is to shoot him and it yeah. plays in part with how she acted in the end of The Force Awakens yeah, where good. her it's first reaction after Han's death was just to attack and just to try to beat him. But yeah, unlike... And it will develop, sorry, it will develop feature in, throughout this movie. And even, even his first in idea is to just try to use the force. Can you see my surroundings? I can't see yours. Just yours. I think, I think this is really, this shows how smart Kylo Ren is in comparison to Ray and how his knowledge of the Force is really strong and really up there. It's a shame, it's just... It's just hinted at when, but at the same time, he's also so much more downtrodden upon yeah. by Ray when it comes to actual abilities for some reason. You get moments like this, but in the long run, she just seems so much more powerful and better than him. I love the look of the caretakers. I find it kind of impractical how one's brooming with a little, like a rake, which is got like three sticks instead of like a many teeth yeah. per se. And it's just, yeah. And here's another, he said we're gonna be up at dawn, but look, it's clearly not dawn right now. It was dawn when she woke up, but then she shot a blast and suddenly it's not dawn all of a sudden. That, so that's the second time I've noticed an error with the whole lighting and the uh, positioning of the sun and whatnot in this film. I remember that whole symbol in the middle, that was like a very big thing. Everyone's like, oh, it looks like Snoke and whatnot. This. Yeah, that, that logo that symbol. symbol. Oh, do you see like the head like that? Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. Kylo Ren is strong with the dark side of the Force. <laughs> this is the worst scene. Absolutely the worst because of how forced. I know. Master how Sky forced does that sound? It just sound, sounds so forced. She delivers it so poorly. Yeah. Like, Mark Hamill's great throughout this whole thing. He is really a well-crafted like well -crafted old Luke Skywalker. Yeah. It's just a shame the character itself is so poorly written. I like this joke. I'll yeah, give them this. But the problem is, I like the joke, but I think the fact that it's happening doesn't make sense at all. Why would Rey reach out, reach out with her hand in this scene when the Force awakens, we saw her reach out to the Force with her mind when she was fighting Kylo Ren. It just doesn't make sense at all why you would do this now when you're with Skywalker, Luke. Yeah. She's made out to be such an idiot for some reason, and I get she should be an idiot, but when The Force Awakens showed her so much with so much potential with The Force and so much skill, she was able to use a Force Jedi mind trick on a Stormtrooper. It just really makes me wonder why she's like this. It goes back and forth, yeah. But the execution of this moment in the scene itself, I really like. Yeah. It's very artistic and different. But it doesn't feel too out of place.
this is yeah this is well crafted and it's well executed i'd say but the problem that arises from this is that the lesson doesn't make sense the force does not belong to the jedi but no one says that the light dies when the jedi die the jedi are a holder of the light so that's a saying when you destroy the dark side for users of the force the dark side doesn't die but with no one using the dark side of the force it's essentially like it doesn't exist so if no one's using the light side of the force like the jedi do then it's essentially like it doesn't exist that's like the superman shot with the whole from super um man of steel I love how this this one this moment occurs and she comes like that. I, but why is he surprised she went straight to the dark? Because you did a similar thing back in the day. Why are you why are you surprised? She's not trained in the force. She reached out with her hand. Why are you not surprised she went to the dark side and why are you expecting her not to? It's, yeah, a big reveal that he's closing. Of course, what do you mean? Of course he has. This is a, such a funny moment. Ben Solo's raw strength didn't scare him enough back in the day. Yet in a few, in a flashback, we'll see later on in the same movie, we see that Luke has fear of what Kylo Ren will do. Ben Solo will do. So clearly, that strength and what he will do freaked you out so why would you say it didn't back then so that, that whole lesson has such a good visual story moment of storytelling and so many cool moments but there's just so many bad moments as well so here's another question i have why can't they get to the, to the resistance did they say that the First Order are blocking their transitions? That, that would make sense. I guess it is. I'm not 100% sure. That would make sense. I can't remember if they said that or not. So I feel like it's only been like 10 minutes since we got last got that last Kylo Ren in a race scene. But there's one cool thing. So you see like the sparks are falling for Kylo when you get the rain falling for Rey. Yeah. Small details like that are really nicely well done. These moments in general are really well done. What do you mean, did to tell you what happened? Adam Driver kills it as Kylo yeah, Ren. So good. Yeah. See, here's another flip side to it. So we saw Kylo Ren lost to Ray, but then here he's so imposing. He comes off in such an imposing way. Yeah. But the problem is because of all that brings him down. Really, right. because no, all that, all his failures that we see bring him down, uh, yeah. and it takes away from these imposing moments, which are well crafted, but because of all these other moments, it just brought down. And slowly the connection is getting stronger. Like, nice way to show that through there. Here's a nice detail that I like. Because the planet seems like a real desert planet from the outside. But when you actually get to the planet, it's got, um, you know, like, look at it. it that's yeah. what I like about it. It's like very deceptive and it's very um, high class kind of thing. It's very kind of like whole... That symbolism that it's representing, I can't remember specifically the word for it but it's very well done where people take everything from the world from that planet or take everything from that area and just build up their own society in a sense so then why would they park on the beach it would this whole scene would have been solved if they <laughs> just park park, somewhere if they else. parked somewhere that no one could actually see yeah park in the grass when no yeah park in the grass up that hill and then you would avoid it, avoid all the attention. See, I like the way this this shot. You know, it's obvious that people are easily backing away from the camera in moments and stuff. 
and Finn just pops out from behind that girl. But I, and the, and then suddenly it just changes. Did you see his positioning at the table? It's at a completely different table now. But it's it's fun. It, I think it's fun. At least that shot. That's actually Cantina Band theme, I believe. Well, it's similar. No, it sounds like it. It's not the actual Cantina Band theme. Now, as if they wouldn't design a better way to stop all that shaking from happening and i find it interesting how not them running here doesn't cause anything to shake here but back where they were before everything shook you know because if, it, if it's shaking is that bad where the casino itself shakes shouldn't the people in the stands be shaking all this it's very impractical it doesn't make much sense Broom boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you say lovey or lovely? It sounded like lovely. I thought the subtitle said lovey, and I was like, lovey? <laughs> what a weird way to say it. Yeah, for anyone just gonna who's going to question Ray's ability with a lightsaber, let's see how she uses a staff. She might hold it with one hand when she's holding the base of it like that. Whenever she spins it around, she uses two hands. So her using a staff does not dictate or like provide any reasoning for why she would be able to use a lightsaber. Yeah. A lightsaber is so powerful that it can cut through objects, deflect blaster bolts, where there's only one handle on her lightsaber currently here, aka Luke's and Anakin's lightsaber. She's holding, it, she's holding it really close to the top. Yeah, she's holding it very close to the top of just one hand. And we just saw her before, she was using um, two hands to spin it around. Now she's using two hands and stuff, but... And the thing is, this choreography is really bad, in my opinion. They made a big deal about Ray, uh, Daisy Ridley learning this choreography. But it looks very like just swinging it around and stuff. But one thing they see, it's just her swinging it around. There's nothing special about it's just it. just like left, right. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I do like is that she notices Luke, and that's what screws her up, and she loses her concentration oh, and cuts it. Yeah, there's a split second where you can see that happen. <laughs> I do find this is funny as well. I, get, I like this. This is good. Well, that was interesting. Where she closed her lightsaber. I'm actually going to rewind that a little bit. And this, I'm gonna, this is something I'm going to actually edit in post. Because I wasn't planning on editing anything in post. I wasn't planning on rewinding this at all. But this is something i got to bring up. So in The Force Awakens, when they turn on the lightsaber, they turn it on from the top of the hilt. Yeah. It's not where the actual um, ignition button is or whatever. But here, look at she, her, where her, she has one hand and it's towards the bottom of the hilt. And that's where she's going to turn it off. And in the Rise of Skywalker, she has rebuilt the lightsaber, so she could have moved the ignition button. I highly doubt it, though. But she clicks it at the top of the hilt as well again. Yeah. So there's this self-inconsistency within the sequel trilogy under Disney where they can't even get this right. Because look, she, look yeah. at where her hand is. But once it, the, the shots just look beautiful. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I like the idea of this, but it's not really true. Jedi, you 
See, here's the problem. At the height of their power was in the prequels. Because as we've established from the movies of the prequels itself, we know that the Jedi are losing ability with the Force. They're not able to sense the dark side. They're not at the height of their power in that moment. And the legacy of the Jedi is not failure. Just because they got taken down in the prequel trilogy doesn't mean they were around striving for thousands of generate years. So... That's a big error with Lesson 2. And it just goes to show that Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 don't really make sense and justify the end of the Jedi at all. But here we are getting that whole, um, you know, thing about um, Luke's backstory and what. So he, ha he has Ben and a dozen students that he's training. We get a flashback. And hopefully this teases the fact that the vision that Ray saw may be from here or maybe from somewhere else, for all we know. But hopefully it is from this planet. Because that would be cool if we get another vision from here. And it, and it'll be show this in more detail. Yeah, because I really want to see. Yeah, honestly, look at the temple, it looks pretty big. He vanished with a handful of his students. I wonder how many students he had if he had a dozen, say like twelve, thirteen or so including Ben. It doesn't make sense. And this is my question. Leia blames Snoke. So they know Snoke exists. Why aren't you doing anything to stop him if you know he exists? It doesn't... It just raises so many questions where I'm not provided an answer. He's just oh, I like the fact that he's kind of tearing up, Luke. But what about all the other Jedi he had? One Jedi failed you. Yeah. But what, what, were, what were the other Jedi? Who were they? It's because he's got a per obvious he's personal connection. He's got an obvious personal connection with Kylo, and that ob yeah, does make you know, a huge difference. But what happened to them? Why were they not a priority for you? Because sure, you had that whole um, belief that you were the more capable of the Jedi. This raises several questions. The medical figure clearly had fuel, and the other ships clearly have fuel as well. So why wouldn't they take fuel from... Why is this guy still here? You can just put the ship on autopilot or put a droid in there. No one has to even stay on the ship at all. Because it's going to blow up no matter what. So why are you still on that ship piloting it? Yeah. It's out of fuel, so it's not going anywhere anyway. So my question is, why is she not telling anyone a plan? Even her. Why is she not even knowing the plan? Because she... Clearly she doesn't trust anyone, but this is just making her out, the way it's perceived, the way it's executed, our protagonists are being pro shown to be in the wrong per se. Yeah. So we don't believe Holder, we don't believe that she's doing this for the right reason, we believe that she's a traitor. So back to what I was saying earlier, if the um, frig medical frigate and other ships have fuel, why didn't they just siphon the fuel from those ships? And put, it, and put yeah. it into the main ship and just because everyone could clearly fit into the main ship so why not just use that main ship and get more fuel exactly and then rock it off to wherever you want to go what? What? this I like it's like yeah, you're saying this all really like as if, if there was no one else in the thing as if they wouldn't hear you know it makes sense It does feel like this character itself was way blown out for this movie. And also had a really big actor tied to it for no rhyme or reason. So he's somehow able to break them into Snoke's ship. And they say no. Why would they say no? They clearly, like, they don't know yeah, but they clearly said that they're running on fumes, that they yeah, need to get there soon. Yeah, but they don't know soon. he's legit or not, that's why. 
Yeah, but then and that's why he did that to prove to them. Yeah, but if he if they didn't, why wouldn't they take the chance? This is them being more selfish than anything. No, it's, it's being safe. Being safe. What what do they lose? They Banner? don't know who he is. So then why? Okay, if they don't know who he is, what do they lose if they don't trust him still? What do they? Could they give him payment, and then what? He's gonna have payment, and he's not gonna go anywhere. He clearly has a way to break out. Cause if he, even if he received payment while inside, you know, he's not gonna do anything with the payment. He's not gonna knock them out or anything. He's not. He can't do anything. So why would they not trust him no matter what? And this guy gets defeated by coins. Fathers, they look really cool. They really well. Design. This is one of the things I feel like I'm saying so much about this movie that it looks really good. Which is a very ironic time to say that because this is the moment where the CGI looks really bad. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this is getting me like Anakin, Kid Anakin vibes. And people always say this is a very much pre prequel like scene. And prequel like mm -hmm. moment and whole kinds of things very prequel like but at the same time prequels wasn't just a bunch of bad cgi cgi was really good at the time that the prequels were released and considering it was like pre 2000s to early 2000s it's really um good for like what the prequels were and this coming out in 2017 it was i believe is really bad <laughs> And look at them, they just destroy a whole city, you know? They, they may sell weapons to the First Order, apparently. That's what Rose convinced Finn to believe. It doesn't mean destroying their property is the right thing to do. Because here's the other thing. What are they, they might be riding one father and they might know that they might not have killed that guy who was in the car. But what about all the other fathers that could be killing people? You know, uh, do they not feel responsible for all of that? And then you get this full CGI moment, and the fact that their father is actually listening to them. It's very interesting to say the least. That's like a desktop screen paper, screen saver shot. I love it, is it even one, it's just one bullet, one blast that goes pew, and then it blows the whole ship up. Oh, I love that. That sound effect reminds me of the po thing is that it doesn't justify it. At the same time, you also just let the Fathias roam this green area. They're just going to be captured again because this hill, as we know, is right next to Kanto by Casino. Mm -hmm. So then why, what, what's the point of all of them just being there when they can just be captured again in a few hours maybe? Transitioning to Luke now. See, I like this. This is like a cool symbolism of his power because he's, he's connecting to the Force. is such a powerful moment where it causes the water to shake. The amount of effort he's putting into it is that much. And that, just that moment of how showing, showing how they have the um, force connection again is really good. And then paired upon the force connection between Rey and Kylo. <laughs> Look, I got a lot of respect for Adam Driver. Because he was like in the army and stuff, you know, it takes a lot to do that. But it's just so funny seeing that. I'm sure they planned it to be funny because of that. Ben Swallow. It also lets, him, lets us see his scar actually goes down to his chest. Which I don't think I noticed in The Force Awakens. Is that even? I don't think he even got cut from the chest. He really got cut from the face. And that they also moved the scar. Can't 
is he, the, the people say that the Force Awakens never built upon her parents all that much. But even The Last Jedi puts the focus on her parents. Yeah. You know? And carries on that expectation that they had in The Force Awakens. That they had set up in The Force Awakens. And, yeah, just... Um, yeah, it's her parents and stuff. But even now, she seems so heartbroken by what he said about the truth of Luke. You know, she's like, liar and everything. Yeah, as in like... But then why does she believe him? Story, huh? But why would she believe it's Kylo? Like she totally believes him. But it's now, it's, it's, well, she believes him enough to go to the dark side. Yeah, but it's enough for, to put her, make her go the to way the. Luke's character is, it's like believable. I don't oh. think it's. I think it's for someone who's made out to be so strong of connection to the Force and aware that the dark side is bad. Yeah. Willingly going to the dark side seems like a bit of a stretch. Considering that it's someone who she despised 20, 10, 20 minutes ago is the one that made her or pushed her to go there. And the fact that she can swim even though she comes from a desert planet. It doesn't make sense. That's why we have to learn to swim because, no, it, you know, we practically can't swim just on our own. Doggy paddle or whatever, sure, but it's a struggle. Remember how she reacted in The Force Awakens when she saw so much green for the first time? It should be similar to this. Or oh, similar, this should be similar to that. So what do you think the meaning of this is? Because I, no I have no idea what the meaning of this is. Is it the idea that even though when there's so many, she's surrounded, she's still just alone? If that makes sense? Because it's meant to be the dark side cave version that Luke experienced just for Rey. But, but I, don't, I don't know what it means. Yeah, the Luke one, at least the meaning was there, but it was also understandable. This one just comes across as being created for no reason. And it needs narration to explain what she's feeling. Because I wouldn't think she's feeling trapped, to be honest. She doesn't seem like she feels trapped. I should have felt trapped. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the narration. Oh, oh. I'm meaning that the narration isn't needed because we can see it. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Um. See, why does she believe Kylo so much? Why is she so intrigued? I feel like it's a. I get the journey that they were going with, and I could believe it, but I feel like it's so. It feels very rushed for what was presented. What's yeah. presented, her caring so much for Kylo, yet moments ago in the same film, like 20, 30 minutes ago, calling him a monster. The whole perception of time in this film, in this movie, is so distraught, distorted, because um, it happened. The fuel for the um, lead ship is sixteen hours or eight hours. Ray's been on this island for two or three days. So it's very confusing at the whole timeline and what's happening. Yeah. But I, I do like this moment aesthetically for what's happening. And how they touch fingers and everything happens with Luke. So it's clearly presented that they both are feeling some sort of connection or some sort of something through the force. Which I think is well set up for f what's to come in the future. Did you try them? <sighs> so why is she? So she's so quickly enough to b believe Kylo. She hits Luke Skywalker. No, Snow created Kylo Ren. How can she believe that Luke did it? Because Ky Luke said that Kylo was... Snoke had already, um, you know, went into Kylo's mind. That's a moment of poor editing there, where they had the wide shot, and it showed Rey on the right side and Luke on the left. But then, just they had the wide shot just then. And it showed Ray on the right side and Luke on the left. But here, when we're seeing it from this perspective, Ray's on the left and Luke's on the right. No, when the white shot happened, she was on the right, he was on the left, and they were moving towards the left of the screen. But in the close-ups, they're on the opposite sides, and that's just poor 
editing because we see them going the opposite way in which they are facing right now. So then why now is she so easily swayed to believing Luke again? So he was afraid. So he clearly was afraid of Kylo Ren's power. But earlier he said he wasn't. So why had Snoke, how had Snoke, you know, gotten into Kylo Ren's mind by now? And why did Kylo think that Luke was killed? It doesn't really work. See, here's a, here's a problem. They set up the stakes where Rey is presented with the idea that what she believes in is possibly wrong. And that Luke, the one who's meant to be more wiser than her in regards to the Force and the whole perspective of everything, even though he made a mistake once, which isn't truly justified or explained through the flashback, we need to get more details about how all of that happened. It doesn't really work. And yet they set up the stake for Rey that what she's going to do can possibly risk and lead to more conflict or lead to drastic changes that could affect her on a permanent basis. But I'll touch back on that later, where the whole um, effects of her decisions won't really come into play. I'm going to have to pause it here because this video has been going on for a very long time and we're about 1 hour and 21 minutes into this movie itself and I'm going to end this part here, our commentary of Star Wars The Last Jedi um, and we're getting up to the part with Yoda and we've gone through a good chunk of it, we've gone through Kanto by, we've gone through the whole Ray vision and everything and I hope you've enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below on your thoughts of the film itself and what we've been talking about. Is there anything we've missed? I know I've made a few mistakes so far, but at the same time, I think I've brought up a few good points. Anyhow, nonetheless, um, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out the next part coming out soon.